I love reading the Bible. I love the way we can read a passage of Scripture maybe a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, and then we read it again, and the Holy Spirit takes the word that He's inspired and quickens it to us in a fresh and a new way, which somehow breathes new life into it and applies it to our own life situations. Now, over this coming month or so, we're going to be reading as a church together through the book of Luke. And maybe it's the first time you've read the book of Luke, or maybe you're reading it for a number of times and you've read it before. But let's pray and believe that God will quicken His Word to us in new and fresh ways that breathe life into our life circumstances. I'm going to start today by sharing a passage from the end of the book of Luke. It's a little bit like Jason Smith who shared last weekend about how he has a pile of books beside his bedside and sometimes to get through them, he flips to the end of the book and reads the end rather than wading all the way through. I'm a little bit like that myself. Sometimes I'll just flip to the end of the story and read it and then I don't have to go through and slog my way through. Now, that's a pretty bad habit, as Jason said, particularly if you're reading a novel. You know, it's best to read a novel sequentially all the way through. But in life and in faith, I believe it's actually good to know what the end is. It's good to know what our eternal destiny is, as Jason talked about last night. It's also good to know some of the steps along the way. So today we're going to turn to the book of Luke, to the end of the story, because I believe if we know the end of the story of Christ's life, His death, His resurrection, His burial, and then His resurrection and ascension, if we know the end of the story, it helps us understand the rest of the story and it can be really encouraging in our life. So we're going to turn to the last chapter in Luke, Luke chapter 24, and we're going to read one of the last scriptures from this story that, Jesus, that Luke is writing about the life of Jesus. Let's look at verse 45, Luke 24, verse 45. Then he, this is Jesus speaking to disciples, then he, Jesus, opened their minds so they could understand the Scriptures. That's my prayer today, that Jesus will open our minds so we can understand his word, his living word in a new and a fresh way. Lord, as we look at some stories, a story today from the book of Luke, as we look at this Scripture from the end of the book of Luke, I pray you'd open our minds and our hearts to understand your ways and your commands towards us, your desire for our life in a new and a fresh way. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Reading on in the scripture at the end of the book of Luke, we see how Jesus says to his disciples, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So here we see the good news of Jesus, a program being laid out, if you like a journey being laid out, a new story being laid out of the good news of Jesus and salvation in Christ going from Jerusalem right to the nations of the world. Now we're beginning a new series today called Influence. And the theme of this series is influence from personal impact to world impact. Today, I'm going to talk about personal impact. I'm going to talk about how our lives can have a personal impact in the lives of others. And as we go through the series, we're going to look at impacting our city, impacting our community, and eventually we'll have a couple of weekends when we look at the whole area of world impact. But let's begin with personal impact, and let's come back to the Scripture again. Notice what Jesus says next. You are witnesses of these things. They had seen Jesus, they had experienced Jesus, and now He is calling them to be witnesses of all that they'd seen and they'd heard. Later in the book of Acts, we read right at the beginning of the book of Acts, which Luke also wrote, that he says, after you've received power, then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and to the ends of the earth. So you see, there's a theme here which Luke is emphasising both at the end of Luke and the beginning of Acts about the expanding influence of God's good news, good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to start by looking at that first initial step of us being a personal witness and the personal impact we can have as we share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. Now, how do you react when you hear that word witness? What goes on in your mind and your heart when you hear it? I know for me, Generally, when I think about that word, I think about someone standing on a street corner preaching the gospel. That just tends to be where my mind goes. And you know what happens? Whenever I think of that, I get nervous because I'm a bit of an introvert. 
I'm not that comfortable with standing up in front of strangers and simply blurting out and declaring that Jesus is Lord. I can be a little bit nervous about it. Nevertheless, when I was a young man and I gave my life to Christ, I became so passionate about God and sharing His good news. Every Friday night, I would go out on the streets in the city where I lived in Christchurch, New Zealand. And there in the centre of the city, we would preach the gospel to anyone who was going by. And after we'd preach the gospel, we'd go out and we'd share with people who we hadn't met before. And every Thursday night, I'd get really nervous. Every Thursday night, I'd be feeling like, oh boy, here we go again. But this passion for Jesus just drove me. And I went out there and continued to share the gospel. And some great things happened. Some really impactful things happened in people's lives. But as I've reflected on that experience over the years, I've realised, you know, I didn't come to Jesus because someone preached the gospel on the street to me. In fact, most times I would avoid those people and walk by and go somewhere <laughs> in, a, in a different direction. You know, I came to Jesus because someone built a relationship with me. Someone invited me into their home in India where I was travelling. And there in their home, I shared meals with them. And I talked with them and I shared with them. And they had some books that I, they enabled me to read on Jesus and the resurrection and how it's true and how Jesus did rise from the dead. Books like He Rolled Away the Stone and Evidence Demands a Verdict. Great books which actually talk about the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ. As I did that, as I spent time with that people, lived in their home, I decided to take a step to give my life to Jesus. You see, that's being a witness in a bit of a different way. That's what I call a relational lifestyle of blessing others. And if we look at the lifestyle of Jesus, if we look at the person of Jesus, we can actually learn that that's a way of being a witness that Jesus himself lived out. Jesus lived out a relational lifestyle of blessing others. And as he did that, their lives were powerfully and personally impacted. There's so much we can learn from some of the stories about Jesus and how he related to others and shared good news with them. We're going to look at one of those stories today. But just before I do, let me tell you about something that happened many years ago, which illustrates this whole aspect of a relational lifestyle that blesses others. There was a couple who were walking along the road after going to a community festival in their local town. The festival had been conducted in the centre of the town, outside the city council offices there. And normally it was a time of celebration. Every year they'd have this festival, it'd be a time of celebrating and just having fun together. On this particular year though, a riot had broken out and someone they knew had actually been killed in that riot. They were walking home because it was just a short distance and they're chatting with each other and they were so concerned and so worried about the circumstances and what had happened. As they're doing that, a stranger is walking in the same direction and he pairs up with them and begins to chat with them and he asks them some questions. Hey, you guys, you look a little bit worried. What's going on? They begin to tell him the story of what had happened in the city. And as they're doing that, he continues to ask more questions. Then he tells them a bit of his story. You see, he'd been in the city at the same time. In fact, he'd been closely connected to those events and knew exactly what was going on. And he was sharing with them. And he also began to share with them from the Bible and share with them some encouraging scriptures. They were so impacted by this and blessed by what he was telling them that they invited him to their home. And there in their home, they shared a meal with him and they spent some time talking with him. As they came to the meal table, he asked them, hey, can I pray for you? And they agreed. So he prayed for them. And then as he finished praying, he took a loaf of bread that had been sitting there, which they were going to share with the meal, and he broke it. And he actually had communion with them, that Christian celebration we call communion. You know, as he did that, that couple's eyes were open to the gospel. Their eyes were open to Jesus. They received Jesus as their saviour, and their lives were never the same from that point on. I wonder, do you recognise that story? It's my own contemporary version of a story we call On the Road to Emmaus in the book of Luke. And I want to turn to that scripture now, but I want to look at it with fresh eyes. Some of you will be familiar with it. Some of you may have never heard this story before, but let's pray that the Holy Spirit will quicken the scripture to us and speak to us in new and fresh ways. We're looking at Luke 24 now, a little bit earlier than the scripture we had before, starting at verse 13. And I'm going to summarize the story as we go and draw out some different aspects. Now that same day, 
Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Now, we don't know if these were two men or two women or a man and a woman, but it's quite likely they're actually a couple because we do know that one of their names was Cleopas. And also, at the cross, as Jesus died, there was a lady called Mary who was watching those circumstances and her husband's name was Cleopas. So it's pretty likely this is actually a married couple. Ancient pictures of this, though, tend to show two guys walking along the road. But we need to look at it with fresh eyes. You know, this may have been a married couple walking along the road together. As they do that, they're chatting and they're talking with each other about what happened. And then Jesus joins them, but they don't recognise him. He asks them, what are you discussing as you walk along? So he asks them some questions and then he listens deeply to them. They stand still as they're talking to him and their faces are downcast. This is what the scripture says. Look at this with fresh eyes. This means that this couple... Even though they'd heard a little bit of a rumour that maybe Christ had risen, Jesus was risen, they were still downcast. They were overwhelmed by the circumstances that they were facing and the violence that they'd seen as Jesus was crucified on the cross. They continue talking to Jesus and sharing the story. And he listens to them deeply as they talk about Jesus. And they talk about the fact in verse 21 that we had hope that Jesus was the one who's going to redeem us or set us free from all the problems that they're facing as a nation. So here, they'd lost hope. They were downcast. They'd lost hope. And Jesus was walking with them in that journey. He begins to speak to them and he begins to encourage them. You know, an ancient way of reading the story, of reading it devotionally, is to imagine that you are that couple or you are those two people walking along the road and that even though you may not recognise it, Jesus is actually walking with you. And maybe you're feeling discouraged. Maybe you're feeling anxious, but Jesus is there. And if we all simply open our eyes to recognize that Jesus is with us, he's with us in this pandemic. He's with us when we lose a job. He's with us when we're sick. He's with us when we're going through whatever things we're going through, but he's there with us. We just want sometimes to pray and say, God, open our eyes to see and he can encourage us as he walks with us on this journey. As we continue on reading through the passage, let's highlight some other aspects of it. Jesus begins to share with them from the Scripture. He begins to encourage them from the Word of God. And then they invite Him home and He sits with them and He shares with meal with them. And as He breaks bread with them in their homes, their eyes are opened and they recognise this is Jesus. This is the one who is crucified. He's alive. There is hope. And we can put our trust in Him. What a powerful story this is. Now, one of the other ways we can look at this passage is not from the point of view of the couple walking along the road, but from the point of view of us being followers of Jesus who want to follow the way that Jesus walked. And here Jesus is, he's following a relational lifestyle where he's reaching out to people and sharing the gospel with them. He's not preaching the gospel so much at them, but he's sharing the gospel with them in a relational lifestyle of blessing. Now here at City Life Church, we have these practices we call blessed practices. And then there's just a simple way of remembering some rhythms or some lifestyle practices that we can observe, which will help us to reach out to others and be a blessing in their life. They, they, they follow an acronym, B-L-E-S-S, spelling bless. One of those is beginning with prayer. Next one is listening to others. The next one is eating together. Then there's serving others. And then there is sharing our story. And this Over this series, this series of influence from personal impact to world impact, we want to encourage us all to take up some of these practices and to take up the challenge to begin with prayer or share our story or listen to others in new and creative ways. But let's not make this a rigid set of rules. Let's not make this a rigid religious ritual that we follow step by step. You see, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't begin with prayer in this story. As he's going along the Emmaus Rose, how did he start? He started by asking questions and listening to others. And then he didn't continue on straight away with eating together. No, the next thing he did was shared his story. Shared the story from the scriptures about Jesus' life, death and resurrection. And then he ate with them. He followed up afterwards and spent time with them. And then he even shared with them and served them by breaking bread together with them and giving the bread to them. And it's as that happened, step by step, that their eyes progressively were opened. Jesus observed a relational lifestyle, not a rigid set of rules, but a relational lifestyle. It's kind of a bit more like a dance rather than a rigid set of rules. I kind of like imagining like this. You know, sometimes you step off with 
listen to others. Other times you step off with sharing your stories. Other times you step off with beginning with prayer. And the order can change and shape in different ways, but it's a set of practices that if we'll just press into them, can really transform the way we personally witness to others and have personal impact in people's lives. You know, Luke wrote this story with purpose. And we can see that he's picking up these practices and these themes in a way which he also picks up in the book of Acts. If we come to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we can see exactly the same practices reflected. You know, the early church continued on the pattern of relational lifestyles, blessing others, just as Jesus did on the road to Emmaus. They prayed. They listened to the apostles' doctrine. They listened to the apostles' teaching. They had fellowship together. They broke bread together. In fact, the very words that Luke uses in Acts reflect the same words of what Jesus did on the Emmaus Road. There's a connection here. See, we can look to Jesus as an example of a practices and rhythms that we can implement in our own life to have personal impact in the lives of others. Here at City Life Church over the last three, four months, at our Manningham campus, for example, at our Whittlesea campus, for example, we've had numbers of people who've actually been observing some of these rhythms and practices of blessing others through a relational lifestyle. Let's talk about Manningham. Up at Manningham, there's a person who was talking to their neighbour about a fence issue because their fence, there was a problem with the fence. They resolved the problem, but then their neighbour began to share at an even deeper level and tell them about their grandchild who had autism. And as they shared about their grandchild who had autism, they also shared about their daughter and the concerns they had for their daughter. And it was a deep sharing which went far beyond just talking about a fence. You know, that's that relational rhythm, that blessed rhythm of listening to others. What about up at Whittlesea? Well, up at Whittlesea, just a while back, there was someone who had a package delivered to them door. This is our Whittlesea campus up in the northern part of Melbourne. And a package was delivered to the door, but it was the wrong address. So they took that package and they found the address where it was meant to be delivered. They went and spoke to the people there. And as they're speaking to the people there, they actually started to build a relationship. That's serving others. You know, down at our Casey campus, let's give another example of one of these blessed rhythms. At our Casey campus, there are some life groups who normally before the pandemic, they would be going out and running a church service in an aged care home. Not able to do that in the lockdown. So what did they do? Well, instead they decided we're going to send some Greeting cards, make some greeting cards with encouraging words that we're going to share with all of those aged care residents. And they began to send them out and share those encouraging words with them. That's serving, that's sharing. That's all about being a blessing to others through a relational lifestyle, even when we're facing limitations through a lockdown. I hope those stories have encouraged you that even at these times, we can be a blessing. We can observe these rhythms. But maybe you're thinking to yourself, no, it's not, not really, we can't eat together. I can't go sharing with my neighbours. This just seems so difficult in this time and this period to be an influence in other people's lives when we cannot actually even visit and go into each other's homes. I want you to reflect on this Emmaus Road story from one more, one more final perspective. If you think about it, the beginning of the story was not as Jesus was walking along the Emmaus Road. This story goes back two, three, four, five days earlier as Jesus came to Jerusalem, was crucified on a cross, was buried in a tomb for three days and then He rose from the dead. Think about it. Jesus was in a lockdown. <laughs> Our Lord and Saviour was in a prison. He was in a prison buried in the ground. He was on the cross, dying and suffering for the world. But he was able to see beyond the cross. He was able to see beyond the circumstances to the hope that lay ahead. What about yourselves? What about myself? I'm trying to think, you know, how's it going to be for me when I come out of this lockdown? Yeah, you know, it is a bit of a struggle. It is a bit of a struggle at various times. And it can be like, yeah, when I get out of this lockdown, boy, I'm just going to be, so I'm just going to need a break. I'm just need to go off to Hawaii, maybe. And Jesus didn't go off to Hawaii. He didn't go off to heaven to have a rest. No, he came out of the cross experience empowered by the Spirit to be a blessing to others. Maybe we're coming out of lockdown and thinking, boy, I'm so angry that this happened. I'm so disappointed about this and there's frustration and anger in our heart. Jesus didn't come out of the cross experience frustrated and angry. No, he came out of the cross experience not coming to call down judgment on the Romans or the Pharisees or the ones who crucified him, but with the heart 
to reach out to others and to bless them. The negative circumstances of the previous three days were totally transformed into a positive outlook where he was able to be a blessing to others. You know, that's my prayer for myself. That as I come out of lockdown, I'd be able to be a blessing to others. Is that your prayer? It's a bit of a challenge for us, isn't it? But I believe as we enter the story, as we walk with Jesus, He can show us practical ways where we can be a blessing to others, both now and as we come out of lockdown and are able to spend more time with each other and with our neighbours and work colleagues. So the challenge for this week at the beginning of our series is to begin with prayer and begin seeking God for our neighbours, our work colleagues, those we run across in our day-to-day circumstances. And what a great place. There is no limitations on prayer during a lockdown. There's no limitations on our capacity to pray for others. Let me tell you a little bit of a story from my own life about the power of prayer. You know, many, many years ago when I was traveling to the city to witness and share and preach the gospel in that way, which I found so intimidating, I was also praying deeply. My wife and I lived up on the second story of an apartment building, a two-story apartment area. And I could look out of the window late at night as I was praying and I saw a house in the distance beyond a farm field and beyond a parkland and it just seemed to draw my attention to it. And I began praying for that house. And as I was praying for that house, it kept coming back day and day again to pray for the people who lived there. One Friday night, I was traveling back from the city after preaching the gospel on the streets there and I saw a hitchhiker by the road And I don't normally or didn't normally stop for hitchhikers, but I just felt, no, I'm going to do this. I stopped, picked him up and asked him, where do you want to go? He said, he wanted to go to that house that I'd been praying for. I was staggered. I was amazed. I went with him. I went to the house. I was able to share with some of the students there. It was a student share house. I invited him to my home in that two-story apartment there, shared a meal with him. And he had lots of questions about God and about Jesus and about heaven and hell. And look, he didn't give his life to Christ at that particular point in time because he was going off down to Antarctica and I didn't have a chance to actually follow up up with him. He was doing some studies down there. Nevertheless, I do believe that that was a God appointment, a God appointed moment where God was working in his life and I was able to be a part of that journey and have a personal impact and influence in his journey towards Christ. We can imagine from the story on the road to Emmaus, as we walk our life journey, Let's join Jesus on that road. Let's watch what Jesus is doing. Let's watch how Jesus is moving in the hearts of our friends, our acquaintances, our neighbours and various ones. And as we watch and as we pray, let's join God at work, build relationships with others and be a blessing in their lives. Maybe as you're listening to this message, you yourself haven't taken that step of giving your life to Jesus. If you'd like to find out more about what it means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, how to serve Him and follow Him for the rest of your days, how to experience the forgiveness of sins and a new life with Him, please just type the words yes on your screen now, on Facebook or on YouTube there, and one of our team members will contact you and they'll be able to tell you more about this wonderful life of following and serving our Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. Let me pray. Lord, I do thank You that Your Word is quick and alive and able to breathe life into our hearts. I pray from these, the simple story about the road to Emmaus that you would take some principles, some insights, speak into every life of every person who's listening today, drop some, some ideas, some thoughts, some encouragement, a word which encourages them in their own life journey and enables them to be a blessing to others as we live out this relational lifestyle of blessing. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Oh.